Hi, everyone. I'm David Bamman, and this is Copyright Session 2, Use Case. So what I want to do now is talk through a sample use case to illustrate some of the issues that we're going to be discussing in this overall section on copyright. And the use case that we're envisioning has a lot of components that are very common in different applications in text data mining, where we have some collection of text in varying copyright status, and we want to carry out some algorithmic transformation of those texts and publish the results. So envision this scenario. You're a researcher who has a large collection of texts already digitized, and what you want to do is perform some natural language processing on those texts and visualize their results for the broader public. In particular, you have a large collection of fictional texts, and what you want to do is extract all of the mentions of place names from each of these texts and plot those place names on a map. This is an aspect of text mining that's known by a number of different terms, uh, including toponym resolution and geolocation, but starts from the fundamental problem of named entity recognition, of simply recognizing all of the names in the text that refer to places. So you extract those place names, georeference them to latitude, longitude coordinates on a map, and the visualization you want to present is effectively an organizing system for your fiction corpus. Whenever a user clicks on a place in a map, you want to present to them a list of all of the times that place was mentioned in a book in your collection, including, importantly, a snippet from the text where that place name shows up. So here we can see a user has clicked on Paris, and we can see that Paris shows up in works by Charles Dickens, Henry James, Zoro Neil Thurston, Vladimir Nabokov, and Margaret Atwood. This involves a fundamental transformation of the data in several ways, not least of which is the fact that you are disambiguating place name mentions and asserting, for example, that when Charles Dickens mentions Paris and Bleak House, he's not talking about Paris, Texas. He's talking about Paris, France. Okay, so let's go over some of the details here to make this a little more clear later on. The books you hold in your collection of fiction are relatively heterogeneous and span over 200 years, being published anywhere between 1800 and 2020. All of these books originate in print form. So for example, they're not born digital as markdown files or PDFs or Kindle editions. They're print books that you've scanned and OCR'd. So recognizing all of the words uh, in text from a PDF or page image. Your corpus also includes some unpublished manuscripts that are housed within your own library collections. And the transformations, again, that you are performing on this data set uh, are name density recognition and toponym resolution, where you're extracting all of the mentions of place names from text and then grounding those place names in specific coordinates on a map. But, your use case doesn't just stop at running a named entity recognition system on your data set and plotting those names on the map. You know that just about all of the existing NER systems out there um, are trained on data that's not fiction. And you know that you can do better if you train your own system on data that actually includes fiction. So what you wanna do in your project is create cre training data in this domain that you care about, right? Fiction written between 1800 and 2020. This data is going to help you train better NER systems for recognizing places as they show up in literature. So you take a thousand novels from your data set and annotate all of the place names that show up in a 500 word sample from each one, effectively creating a total label data set that's 500,000 words long. Now your primary goal in creating this data set is to make NER better for your visualization. But at the same time, you recognize that this data set really would be of tremendous value to the research community. It would allow computational researchers to train and evaluate models for NER on a domain that simply does not have that much annotated data. You would be helping the community be less focused on news, for example, uh, while also at the same time, helping improve these tools for other researchers in the humanities who are working with these texts. So in addition to publishing your interactive visualization of place names mentioned in fiction, you also want to publish your annotated data set of 500,000 words for others to use. You value reproducibility as a scientific goal and want to have that data set out there in the world. You can see here what one of these annotations would look like. You want to publish a 500 word snippet of, for example, Nabokov's Pale Fire, along with your annotations for which words or places within it for all of the 1,000 novels in your annotated data set. So those are the two main aspects of this use case we're working with, 
creating a visualization, plotting place names extracted from fiction on a map using algorithmic transformations of NER and toponym resolution, and also publishing a new annotated data set of place names mentioned in these works. So keep this use case in mind as you go through the rest of the copyright segments, and we'll return to it in the end.